Hey everyone, yesterday I had a huge success with the new marble divider. It works, it's a big milestone for the machine. And today I'm going to attach these marble lanes. So the marbles comes from the conveyor belt over here, through these curves and in to the marble divider. These marble lanes have a hidden feature actually that I will show later. But first step is to see if we can get this on. So to connect these marble tracks with the marble divider, I have this adapter piece. Let's see if this just clicks in place or not. Hmm, I do have some decisions to make here. So first of all, I have to choose how far I want this adapter to be. We want it like this, or maybe if we want the whole thing lower, like this. No, that's not good, I don't think. But one thing that I thought about if I put this adapter piece too far in the front, that could create a pocket exactly like this. This marble will get stuck. Like this. See this? So I'm sure I have to retract this adapter to avoid that edge case. So like this, no marble can get stuck. I've secured the marble path to the divider, but it's quite a big jump here. But it actually works. Still rests on tops. Let's just hit it some with some more marbles. More marbles resting on top. I'm looking for problematic edge cases. Let's say that this happens. Yeah, here we have an issue. I would deem the chance of this happen one in a million, but if there's something I've learned, marbles are evil. If they can mess things up, they will. I need to rethink this and see if I can avoid this step of marble building up on top like this. Hmm, 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 hmm. I've done some thinking. I had to listen to Vitalik Buterin for at least two minutes to get into the correct mindset. Anyway, there's two edge cases we have to avoid. So the first edge case is this shelf up here that we just demonstrated where marbles can get stuck on this shelf, build up and slowly clog the marble lanes. So by pushing the adapter piece forward, we remove that issue down here. So there's no stacking up. However, we introduced the second edge case that we have to avoid. In the cases where the marble height is in a specific height, we can then have the case where this marble wants to fall in, but it's wedged like that. So this is another catastrophic failure of the functionality, so we can't allow this. So my plan is to make valves underneath this piece to prevent the marble from clamping. And then I was thinking, well, Perhaps I'm just moving the clamping point higher, but that's actually not true because when the marble is higher, the second marble doesn't want to fall in to this open space. It wants to fall down into the groove. I wanted to try to cut these outdoors and I also wanted to try the sound of my windshield double Sennheisers. For all audio pros out there, we're just using one of them for my voice in mono, but when I'm building, we're using them in stereo. So Sennheiser shotguns with windshields. How is this sound? Is it awesome? Of course it is. <laughs> Let's do this one. 
I'm going to add a depth line on two sides so I can get a similar cut with the Dremel each time. So here I'll put the middle line for the cut. It's actually nice to make a piece by hand from time to time and not by CNC. Let's see if it works. Okay, so it does line up really nicely. And here's the trick. Now this marble right here can fall in completely. And a second marble is not even interested to be on top of that marble. So here we have the perfect edge case. You can see it's sticking out, but it's so high so the, this marble passing underneath. One of the two edge cases are solved. Now we just have to find a way to get the marbles down securely. I think this point here is higher than what we had before. So the slope here is a little bit more shallow, making the marbles go kind of slow. Perhaps higher here. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Or I can shim this point with some washer stacks. Ah, that's, that's probably the absolute best idea. I can put this a little bit higher. Maybe with the drop off is even smoother with a less fall here. I've raised this end with one washer and most channels looks perfect. There are some slow ones still. There. But I'm seeing on the slow ones that the wood is very uneven. It's very much burr here. I'm gonna try with some 600 sandpapers and make a glossy surface. Let's look at this track before sanding. These tracks are purpose-built to be slow, but they can't, of course, be too slow. Let's see if this helped. Oh yeah. I built them to make the marble slow because I wanted less kinetic energy when they entered the marble divider. Let's try the next one. Ooh, you see how slow it is here? Yeah, perfect. Oh, ah, that's the redundancy alarm. <laughs> Having marbles being on the verge of not making it through the marble lanes is not redundant enough. And I looked closer. What I need to do is I need to take them off and sand a new angle. So this front of the marble lanes can sink a little bit lower, meaning that the marbles will have a steeper angle. And yeah, I just need to create some redundancy so the marbles always fall through. Because if we have a clogged pile up here, we have a critical error. So I have the 2021 model of the redundancy alarm. So once it goes off, you have to, you can't cut corners. You have to fix your issues for real. This is sanded and look great, but once you've tasted redundancy, you want more, right? <laughs> I saw that this bracket that keeps the marble lanes up is only tack welded on two small spots. So I'm gonna strengthen it in the name of redundancy. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, that's gorgeous. You can't see it, you have to take my words for it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Come on. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's perfect. Lane seven. 
Ooh, it's perfect. Lane eight. Nice. Four. That's brilliant. You saw that one was problem before. Three. Perfect. Three. One. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. All hail redundancy. I have one more thing to do. I'm going to sand down these ridges here so the marbles don't make this jump when they enter. OMG, I think I'm done. People complain about climbing Mount Everest. You should try climb the Marble Machine X for, <laughs> for two days. We are going to make a final test. I'm gonna start the motor. I've connected the clock escapement gate to one channel of the marble divider. Here comes the marbles. So far so good. Here comes the pipe. It is filling up. Yes, look at this. The pipe is full. Now the marbles are recycled. I'm going to pull the drum lever and the clock escapement gate will play. So now the conveyor belt should start to pick up marbles. Yeah. We have marbles in the conveyor belt. Yeah! New divider is working with the marble tracks. Perfect. I love the sound when it stops. Okay, it's working. I'm super happy. I managed to take away all the edge cases and yeah, this is brilliant. I want to show you how and why I made this redesign of the marble tracks from the conveyor belt down to the marble divider. These marbles could get stuck in the old design and they were traveling on the backside of the conveyor belt and ended up on the floor. I call them the ghost marbles. So I disassembled everything and then I realized that this design was so over engineered and complicated. All these acrylic parts and metal parts, it was just a huge mess. So I knew I could replace all these 54 parts with like one big plywood part. So I used my Mercier curve to help me draw these lines and try to make something that looked kind of nice in plywood. And then I took a flat photograph on the wall so I could have something to CAD from. And then I started a quite extensive CAD process where I tried to make a kind of a roller coaster thing. And here is the hidden feature. I have to wash my hands with acetone after clickbaiting you with that title, but these marble lanes do have a hidden feature. And the cool thing is that I'm using 
the technique of over rotation. So the way I've designed these marble lanes makes the marbles roll slowly. That's what I'm testing right here. By not having the marble roll on its underside, instead of having it roll in a very particular shaped V groove, I can exactly control how fast the marbles are running. Here I'm recutting the part to make them go even slower. So it's kind of cool, it's kind of anti-gravity way of manipulating how marbles are rolling. I do think I've gone deeper into this particular rabbit hole than almost <laughs> anyone else. So here I'm measuring frame by frame how much slower I can make the marbles. In this test here, the track on the right has the most over rotation and makes the marble go slower. So you can have this nice waterfall effect when you compare these tracks on the test cut. So here's some slow-mo testing and I really love the fact that several groups of marbles are on the marble tracks at the same time. Before the marbles were slowed down, that wouldn't have happened. So I think this is actually a brilliant addition to the general aesthetics of the Marble Machine X. It also echoes the look on the original Marble Machine when we had this kind of big curve on the top of the machine. I really love how this turned out and now when I could make the marble lanes also work with the new height independent marble divider, it's perfect. To put this progress in context, this new marble divider is removing a huge issue we had before. With the old marble divider, we needed a whole complicated height adjustment system. This marble divider is better designed and just don't need it. The best part is no part and respect for redundancy, for the need of redundancy, is the song of 2021. Special shout out today to the Discord username Fleas, who has actually been part of prototyping this marble divider design, but I've missed it. So, so far, I've credited nobody, Locket Rancher and Rosero. And from here on, it's going to be nobody, Fleans, Locket Rancher and Rosero, who receives the credit for actually coming up and proposing this idea of marble design. Thank you, Fleans. There's so many people involved in the Wintergarten community on Discord. So some names are unintentionally omitted sometimes, but the goal is to be a little bit less wrong every day. So it works. Awesome.